So the first episode of season three of Gotham just dropped and I wanted to give you the good, the bad, and what I thought about Gotham. So before I talk about this episode, I should probably tell you my thoughts on the show in general. Well, I don't actually like it or enjoy it all that much, but I keep watching it. It's kind of like I'm in a really bad relationship with this show. So maybe you've got a friend or maybe it's you. You're in a relationship with someone or they're in a relationship with someone where clearly they don't get along. There's all kinds of issues. They butt heads constantly. No one's really happy in the relationship, but both people just kind of feel there's something sparked there. There's some reason they just feel drawn to each other and therefore they just don't break up even though they obviously should. That's me with this show. People ask me all the time, wait, you still watch that show about Batman without Batman in it? I'm like, yeah. Wait, that show where it has all the villains way before he's Batman? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't know why I'm watching it. And I kind of want to talk about that as maybe a way of therapy for myself as I process why I watch this show that I don't like. So in this episode, it picks up six months after where the previous season left off. Bruce Wayne has been traveling in Europe doing research, trying to figure out the corruption inside of his uh, Wayne Enterprises. Penguin and Fish Mooney are battling for control of Gotham. Gordon has retired from being in the police force, but he's become like a bounty hunter that gets paid to bring in monsters. These monsters I speak of are the monsters freed at the very end of the last season. They're on the roam. The police are having trouble catching them. So Gordon is catching them for them like a vigilante. With so many plot lines and characters for us to catch up on, it doesn't really introduce us to a whole lot of new stuff. So it hinted at the Court of Owls in the last season, and so it indicates clearly that's where this season is going. And it introduces a new reporter character that I assume is related to Vicki Vale, because her last name is Vale and her first name starts with a V. But that's all it kind of gives us. It's really catch up, see where everyone's at, and just a setup where we're going but it doesn't give us a whole lot more than that. So as for the good, I'll try and have some good here. I liked what they did with Bruce Wayne in this episode. I saw the promo episode or promo pictures for it and they showed like long-haired, homeless Bruce Wayne and I was like, "Oh, there's so many ways they could be going with this that I'm really going to hate. I do not want to see long-haired, homeless 13-year-old Bruce Wayne. That does not interest me at all. And where they go with that, I'd, I'd kind of forgotten some stuff about where the previous season ended. It didn't really go in that direction. That's in there, but it doesn't go in that direction in the way I didn't want it to go. But what it does do, and I really liked, is they show Bruce Wayne standing up to his board and just kind of confidently going after the people that are corrupt and trying to bring him down. So you're starting to get to see the Bruce Wayne you actually want to see as opposed to weird, mopey, 13-year-old Bruce Wayne that no one has ever said they want to see. And so many of the things with Bruce Wayne in the last two seasons, you're just head-scratching stuff where you're like, why would you think I would want to see Bruce Wayne in any of these situations at all? Why would I want to see this? I don't. I'm interested in seeing maybe, I guess, a teenager Bruce Wayne becoming awesome and I think I got a little bit of that. So as for the frustrating, that's really mo almost all of the returning villain characters. They're just they're frustrating what they do with them. And like, so they have Catwoman, Selena Kyle, going around with Fish Mooney and her new gang. And we're supposed to kind of relate and connect with Selena, Selena Kyle. She's supposed to be kind of that bridging character between Bruce and this crazy world. Except the crazy world is so violent and sociopathic that the fact that Celine is engaged with it and connected with it all just puts her in a horrible light and she becomes unrelatable because when you're just hanging around with someone that's brutally murdering people with no empathy, no mercy, no anything, you become just as bad as that person because you're not standing up to it. So Selena Kyle's too connected to this stuff and she's kind of looks like she's feeding stuff over to Gordon, but not really enough that you don't, you're not like, She's killing people in front of you and you're not stopping her. That means you're an accessory to what's going on. Therefore, I can't forgive this teenage girl that's just freely joining the bad guys. Along the same line, Fish Mooney's always been a terrible character that I don't like at all and I don't like the way she's portrayed at all. And it's kind of the same here. It's more of just, okay, she screams and yells and wants power and she's kooky and weird. Okay, 
Still not interesting. I still don't like the shtick. There's nothing about her that's interesting to me. And then the Barbara Keene character, once again, is just a terrible character. She's more tolerable now that she's just a vil actual sociopath villain. But in and of itself, that's just so frustrating that they start the show off that she's normal. And then by the time we get to even the end of the first season, she's a sociopath lunatic person that kills people and laughs like the Joker. And it seems like they're setting her up to be Harley Quinn. That's weird. That, that's a weird direction to go with the character. And so it's just odd to see on screen and just kind of, where did this idea come from? Who thought that this is what people want Barbara Keene to be like? Uh, and did you, did they just realize everyone hated the character at the beginning? So like, Hey, what else can we do with this actress? That's pretty. And so, they came up with this? I don't I don't get it. Just as for the straight up bad, um, they're setting up a freak of the week type setup. A bunch of monsters were set free on the city at the end of the last season, so now they're all free on the city, yeah. <laughs> and um, you get introduced to a bunch of them, and there's a guy with like big dinosaur spikes on his back, and there's a person that touches people and they turn old, and there's a guy that looks like he has bat wings, and then there's a person in like a Mortal Kombat, looks like they're dressed like Scorpion or something like that. And it's just weird. Why would you have a TV show like this where you introduce Batman's rogues gallery, use Batman's rogues gallery, and then introduced a bunch of super power powered super villains that aren't interesting at all that we've never heard of before that are just set up to be taken down each week? Why would you do that when you have access to all these other more interesting characters? Isn't that kind of the whole point of the show is these rogues gallery people seeing them? That's the point. What are we doing with all these characters no one cares about? And then once again to the bad. At the core of this show, it's all about seeing a Jim Gordon in the situation that leads up to a world that needs Batman to help cure it. And what would make him want to partner with uh, Batman to save the city from all of this chaos. But in the show, you don't see that Gordon you don't see the guy that we know from the comics and from the movies. You see like an angry cop that sometimes has to go on the wrong side of the law that, I mean, he just doesn't come off like Jim Gordon at all. The portrayal, the acting seems off. And I like the actor playing him, Ben McKenzie. Like I like him. I have the whole DVD set of the OC. I mean, I like him, but it just feels out of place in this show. It's like the one character that's played just dead serious without any sort of like camp to it in a show that's incredibly campy. And so it just feels out of place and out mismatched tone wise. Um, and so, yeah, it's very odd what they're doing with the lead character of their show that doesn't feel at all like the person he's supposed to be. So how about you? What do you think about the show Gotham? It drives me crazy, but I think I'm going to watch through this whole season week to week. I've binge watched over the summer the first two seasons, so, so I'm just going to try and watch it week to week this time. If people are interested in talking about it in the comment section, I'll do these videos throughout the, <laughs> the semester if there's people interested. Uh, I just wanted to do one to, you know, see who's interested and see what happens with that. So tell me, what do you think about Gotham? And if you watch this episode, what did you think about this episode? I don't want to just talk about TV. I want to talk about TV with you. So let's comment in the comment section and have a great conversation about this very weird show that exists. If you like this video and you haven't seen my videos before and haven't clicked that subscribe button, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching.